add VFX or particle effects to your game and it will instantly, instantly become more awesome. Now, by controlling the intensity of that VFX in real time using code, you will be reaching AAA quality standards. So today we are pyromancers and we are going to burn some stuff, virtually, of course. This is what we are going to make. We have a fire that has been done with VFX graph and after a while it is going to spread up to a certain size and that expansion is controlled with code. This tutorial is pretty simple and it's going to give you a quick start into manipulating VFX graph. The first thing we are going to make sure is to have a somewhat recent Unity version. I'll be using Unity 2022.2 and I'll also use the URP sample scene that you can find in Unity Hub. By default, VFX graph is not in the project, so let's open the package manager and make sure to install visual effect graph. There's also a few samples and I took them as well because it has a pretty nice bonfire to get started with. Once you installed VFX graph and added the samples, you can find the prefabs under samples, visual effect graph, the version, visual effect graph again, and finally prefabs. Take the bonfire and drag and drop it in the scene. Right now, this is very unrealistic, so I will grab the paint bucket and move it into the fire. All right, now this is believable. Now select the bonfire and in the inspector, you see that it has a visual effect component and at the bottom there are some properties. Those properties will change how this effect behaves. The spawn area radius makes the effect bigger, which is exactly what we're going to use. Buoyancy acts like wind in this case. You can control the smoke, the flames, the sparks. If you click on edit, you see the actual graph. It has three spawners for the smoke, for the flames and for the sparks. What is interesting for us are the properties. You see them again on the left panel. Spawn area is of type circle and deprecated, damn it. Anyway, those properties are the same as you saw in the inspector. They are publicly accessible and so we are going to access them by code. The only thing that matters is to remember how the parameter is called. Spawn area with a capital S, a capital A and a stupid space in the middle that I don't recommend. You will understand why in a minute. Let's create a new script. Call it fire VFX modifier and drag and drop it on the bonfire. First things first, import unityengine.vfx at the top. Then let's make a private visual effect field. And in the awake method, let's grab it with get component. And for debugging purposes, let's print the name of the visual effect asset. By the way, print is the same as debug.log. It's basically the lazy shortcut. If I run this now, we'll see that the name of the effect will be printed. Simple stuff. Now, accessing any parameter of the visual effect is a bit similar to the animator in a sense that we have to match the strength exactly. To modify the radius of the spawn area, we have to write it as spawn area, exactly as the parameter is defined, followed by an underscore and the name of the next parameter, like radius. You can guess why I didn't like the space in the name. We can test if this string is valid by calling has float on the visual effect component. Obviously, it is going to be true. I'm not showing you wrong stuff here, but this is a great way to make sure that your scripts will work on a particular VFX. All right, I also want to show you that you can use shader.property2id to convert the string to an int and use that instead. It's overall much faster when you access that property a lot and it is an easy win and the code doesn't get more complex, so why not? Finally, here's one way to animate the fire ourselves using a proper lerp. Lerp is usually done in one line, but I came across this blog post that explains very nicely how to lerp in a better way. I really like it. You can find the link in the description. Basically, we create a new method called change fire radius that return an I enumerator. So yes, it's coroutine time. The coroutine will run for a certain duration, so we track the time in a while loop and yield nothing every frame. Every iteration, we update the radius of the visual effect with the method set float. The new value will be a mathf.lerp between the start value and the end value. And time t will be time divided by duration. The start value is simply the current radius of the VFX. And after the loop, we set the radius to the end value. If you used lerp in another way, you might have experienced that it can reach 99.99% of the target value but never quite stopped there. So this avoids this thing. To make this script a bit nicer, we added the target value and duration as fields in the class. And to test this code, we just invoke our spread fire after three seconds of waiting time. And spread fire starts the coroutine. Save, run, and let's see the world burn. <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. It works. 
After 3 seconds, the radius slurps to 1, which is the target that we have set. It's surprisingly easy to do this kind of stuff. The hardest part is probably doing the VFX itself. I encourage you to check the official documentation. It's very useful and pretty complete. Now, if you prefer the particle system, it can also be controlled with code. It's even more explicit because you can access everything with proper fields. Oh, you don't know about Unity's particle system? Stop. Not here. <laughs> All right. And if you want to continue the discussion on Discord, you can join the kingdom. The link is in the description. All right. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Now go work on your game. All right, so this video is a bit different. I tried to basically not record myself because right now it's easier for me to just record my voice than to set everything up and record with the camera. Let me know in the comments if you like this as well or if it's, let's say, more difficult to follow or less entertaining. So yeah, I might be doing a few of those to see how it goes and uh, we'll see later if I have to change it or not. See you guys.